Hello everybody, I'm Dean Robinson and welcome to the Dean J TV Show. Now you also may be familiar with my website SummitCityNoise.com. If not, check it out after the show. Now I'm not going to waste any time talking about me because if you guys want to know who I am, go to SummitCityNoise.com. I've produced shows here on Access before, I've got other stuff on YouTube, so if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm nothing new. I mean, some of you might have worked with me. I used to work at Do It Best Corp. They fired me in 2008. But, you know, they were wrong for firing me. It was unjust cause that they fired me. But, yeah, I'm not worried about people. But one of the reasons that I did get fired and why I'm able to do all this now is because I had this awakening in July of 2008. And so now I speak the truth. A lot of people don't like it, especially some of these corporate structures. But I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. So the purpose of this show, the Dean J TV show, well the purpose of the show is to sort of go behind the scenes of this show business, entertainment, international corporate mass media system and just show you how it works. But not in the way that you can see, you know, on these DVDs where they're just showing you how they make Avatar, they have people with dots all over their face and all these 3D graphics. You know, using all these computers to make movies that cost, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars to produce even though everything's in a computer. Well, I'm not going to show you that part. I'm going to talk more about why it exists and what it does. Because you're going to see this whole notion of entertainment. Well, you're going to see this whole system, this whole entertainment system. Hollywood, Dream Factory. Well, entertainment. If you look it up in the Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, well, the first definition for the word entertain, which is the root word of entertainment, entertain means maintain. So to entertain means to maintain. And then it's going to go on to say entertain means to hold, to keep, to maintain in the mind. So people, what's going on with this entertainment system, this whole entertainment structure? Well, the design of it is to hold, to keep, to maintain your mind, your imagination, your very mind, your higher level of thinking, not just your brain. Your brain is going to be that physical part of your body that's going to be reacting to all this electrical and chemical stimulus. Yeah, that's going to be the brain serving the body, making sure it's warm when it needs to be, making sure it's getting away from danger, making sure it's going towards pleasure, all of it. But you've got this higher level of thinking, your mind, yeah. Well, that's what this entertainment system is capturing, because if they can capture that, well, they can control the body and brain mechanism. They can influence it so strongly. And they are, especially when we just let this system just do what it does. So, yeah, people, in a nutshell, that's what I do. And that's the purpose of the show. Yeah, people. Now, in this first segment, we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve System. Now, I know you people are already bored as soon as I say... Federal Reserve System because I'm about to talk about banking and nobody wants to talk about banking because it's so boring or you just think, yeah, man, I probably owe these mugs some money. But with this Federal Reserve System, you've got to understand what it is. The Federal Reserve, it sounds like it's government, but it is not. It is not government. It is what you might call quasi-government. It just looks like government and sounds like government because it's called Federal Reserve. But it is the reserve bank, the central bank for the federal government, for the corporation known as the United States of America. Yes, the corporation that provides government systems. And so, as part of the government system role, well, they created this Federal Reserve Act. Now that went into effect back in 1913. The United States Congress passing this thing, and then President Woodrow Wilson signing it into law, the Federal Reserve Act, which gives the Federal Reserve, which is just a private gang of private banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, which is going to be, you know, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, you got the Rothschilds in there, the Morgans, the Warburgs, all these mugs, well, they're the ones who own the Federal Reserve. They are the Federal Reserve. Through this Federal Reserve Act, they have the power to create money out of nothing. They just think it up out of nothing. The Federal Reserve doesn't even print Federal Reserve notes. No, they leave that work to the United States Treasury. It's the Bureau of Engraving and Printing that actually prints the Federal Reserve notes. 
So here's how it works, people. You've got this private money gang. And let's look at it like that. Because that way it'll be a little bit more sexy. Kind of like a Hollywood blockbuster. So we're going to call it the money gang. And we're going to have Will Smith as Rothschild agent. Yes, very secretive. They're going to be calling him Rothschild and Rothschild and Rothschild because they don't know how to pronounce it, but they just know he's an agent. Or maybe he really is a Rothschild we don't know. Will Smith is Rothschild agent in the money gang. Yes, the story of the Federal Reserve Act. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got Will Smith as Rothschild agent. Then you've got Adam Sandler. He's going to play J.P. Morgan because it's going to be an action comedy, a high concept action comedy with Will Smith. And then, yes, we're going to have Adam Sandler bringing the laughs as J.P. Morgan. And then, you know, for the ladies, for the lovey-dovey stuff, we're going to bring in Hugh Jackman. And then Hugh Jackman's going to play Paul Warburg. But we're just going to call him Warburg. Because we're going to kind of play on that whole Wolverine thing where he's kind of, you know, just a badass. Well, that's going to be Hugh Jackman as Warburg. And then it's going to be Jay-Z. It's going to be and Jay-Z. You know, like in these movies, they get and. And Jay-Z as Rockefeller. That's the money gang, people. The money gang. It is these guys that are so cool. They're international cool and wealth. Well, they decide to pool their cool and all their political influence and wealth. Where well, they're going to pull all this together instead of fighting amongst one another. Well, yeah, they're going to stop all this fighting and work together because Rockefeller, he hates competition. So he's going to say, hey, guys, why don't we just pull in our efforts and we'll create this entity that just creates fiat money, paper money out of nothing. It'll be our own golden goose, just straight up alchemy. And we'll use our political buddies over in Washington, D.C. Well, we'll get them to pass this off. So it'll be a federal law that this Federal Reserve Banking System exists. A central bank for America that just thinks up, imagines money out of nothing. They don't even print it up. That is the United States Treasury that prints it up. And so how it's going to work? You know, you're going to have these bankers meeting in 1910 in Jekyll Island off of, you know, the coast of Georgia. They just had this 100th anniversary meeting there. Alan Greenspan spoke about all this. Yes, meeting at Jekyll Island. So these mugs, these bankers, and you need to read this book, people, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. He's going to talk about all this stuff. And he's going to talk about, you know, back in 1910, these seven men who met at Jekyll Island, you know? Okay, the seven men who attended the secret meeting on Jekyll Island where the Federal Reserve System was conceived represented an estimated one-fourth of the total wealth of the entire world. Are you getting this, people? Okay, they were Nelson W. Aldrich, Republican Whip in the Senate, Chairman of the National Monetary Commission, father-in-law to John D. Rockefeller Jr., Standard Oil people, then you've got Henry P. Davison, senior partner of J.P. Morgan Company. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Charles D. Norton, president of First National Bank of New York. Hmm. Then you've got A. P. I. Andrew, assistant secretary of the Treasury. He had just government on this vacation at Jekyll Island coming up with legislation. Frank A. Vanderlip, president of the National City Bank of New York, representing William Rockefeller, people. Mm. Yeah, then you've got Benjamin Strong, head of J.P. Morgan's Bankers Trust Company, later to become head of the Federal Reserve System. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Paul M. Warburg, a partner in Kuhn, Loeb & Company, representing the Rothschilds and Warburgs in Europe. These private bankers, you're going to read about this stuff in The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. Those private bankers, they're the ones who came up with this Federal Reserve Act. They squeezed it and pumped it through Congress in 1913, got passed into law. That's why we've got private bankers who can create money out of nothing, people. That's right. And then they try to make it so you owe it. The United States Treasury says you owe it to the tune of $13.7 trillion. But we don't owe it, people. It is the United States government, the United States Treasury that owes that money. We need to make them pay it. But I gotta take a break, people. I'm Dean Robinson. This is a Dean J TV show. I'll be right back. <laughs>